Hello and welcome. My name is Chris and in this video I will show you how to create these lines and circle bursts. And also at the end of the video I will show you how to create this multicolor circle burst like this one here. So let's get started. I will go in the shape tools and choose the ellipse tool. So I will drag an ellipse like so and choose its size to be 64 by 64. In the appearance panel, I will set its stroke width to be 6 pixels. Now it's time to create a line. So I'll go in the shape tools and choose the line tool and then drag a line like so. Make sure the cap is set to round to make it look better. Now it's time to move the line on top of this circle. So I'll select it and move it here. By holding shift and tapping the up arrow twice, I can move the line up by 20 pixels. Now it's time to animate the line, but before using the record button, I will go into the line's stroke settings and choose its dash and gap to be 100. And for the dash offset, I will set it to 0, and for the path length, I will set it to 100%. Now I will activate the record button and go on the 1 second mark on the timeline and choose its dash offset to be minus 100, like so, and its stroke width to be 0. Now let's play it. That looks fine, but of course we can also set its easings by selecting these two keyframes and choosing ease out. Now it looks a little bit better. We can move on to moving the anchor point and duplicating the line. So I will hold Ctrl or Command and drag the anchor point like so. And also Ctrl or Command plus D to duplicate the line. And I will rotate the line by 45 degrees. It's time to repeat the process, so I will duplicate and rotate. Now I will play to see how it looks. That looks fine. And now it's time to move on to animating the circle. We'll start by selecting the circle and choose the filter option Show Only Selected. We'll enable the record button. And now we'll change the stroke width to be 0, so it goes from 6 pixels to 0 pixels. Next, in the property panel, we'll choose the scale to be 0, but because we want to go from small to big, we'll have to reverse. So right click and choose reverse. Now it goes from small to big. Let's play and see it. And of course, we'll choose the ease out easing for these keyframes. I will disable the show only selected filter and the record button because we no longer need them. Now I will select the objects and group them by hitting Ctrl or Command plus G. I will duplicate this group by hitting Ctrl or Command plus D. And now I will enter its context by hitting Enter on the keyboard. We can select multiple objects by holding Shift and clicking on the objects like so and with the backspace button we can delete them now to end to exit the context we can click on that button or we can choose to press the escape button on the keyboard now let's duplicate this group as well so i will select the group and hit ctrl or command plus d to duplicate i will enter its context and will delete the circle now because we want the lines to be aligned to the center where the anchor point is, we can choose to click and hold this option and set it to bottom center. And that's how you can move objects to where the anchor point is. We can also duplicate by holding Alt or Options and by dragging the group like so. Next, I will enter its context and delete all of these lines. Now I will exit the context and I will choose to play the animation. To show you how to create a multicolor circle burst, I will select this circle by holding Ctrl or Command and clicking on it, and then Ctrl C to copy it. Now I'll create a new layer and lock the burst layer, and then with Ctrl or Command plus V, I will choose to paste it. And up here, I will click on this to center the anchor point to the object. Now I will enter its layer context, and I will set the duration of the animation to be 30 frames. Also, 
I will choose to set its visibility bar to be 31 frames. If the playhead goes beyond the visibility bar, the object won't show anymore. And now let's rename it to white. Duplicate it and name it to yellow and duplicate it again and name it to purple. Go to the yellow one and choose its color to be yellow. And now go to the purple one and choose its color to be purple. If we play the animation, you will see that the circles overlap. That's not what we want. So we'll select these two and stagger them by six frames each. Let's see what we have. I will exit the context and play the animation again. That's it for this video. If you learned something, hit the like button and consider subscribing and sharing this video with your friends and co-workers. I will see you in the next video.